So now we're going to be looking at the BC calculus um, for your response questions. So I already have the AB exam questions and three of them align with the BC questions. So now I'm going to go through the three BC questions that are different. And so we're starting here with the second one, which is the calculator question. So let me pull up the calculator here and clear that. Okay, so for time t greater than or equal to zero, a particle moves in the xy plane with position x of t, y of t, and velocity vector given by that. At time t equal to zero, the position is that. Find the speed of the particle at times t equals 1.2 and find the acceleration vector of the particle at times. So they want the speed. Speed is the magnitude of the velocity vector. So what we're going to do is we have the velocity vector here. So the magnitude is going to be the square root of the x component squared. All of this squared plus uh, sine squared t to the 1.25. So we're going to do that operation there. And so we're going to do square root of, so I'm going to plug in, uh, let me see. Well, why don't we just, I'm going to implement them as functions. Um, so we can, um, oops. All right, so the first one is t minus one. So I'm gonna do x minus one, then e to the x squared. It's the x component, and then the y component is going to be sine of x to the 1.25. Oh, that didn't right. So then what we want to do is we want to compute the square root of y1 squared, y1 at 1.2 um, squared plus y2. I don't know if I need to put these parentheses around it, but... Y2 at 1.2 squared. So we're going to get 1.27, 1 1.271. And then the acceleration vector is just the derivative of the velocity vector. And so we want the acceleration vector at 1.2, which is the velocity vector at 1.2. So we just need to compute the derivatives of y1 and y2. So nth derivative with respect to x, uh, y varies function, this is the x component, evaluate at 1.2. That's 6.247 comma, let's do the same derivative again. Sorry, it's kind of annoying to have you plug it in, but we just simply do that just to be familiar with the calculator, and we have them all plugged in for the next part, 0 0.405. Okay, so that's the acceleration vector, that's the speed, and good. Find the total distance traveled by the particle over the time 0 to 1.2. So here we're going to integrate from 0 to 1.2 the absolute value or the speed of the vector. So we're basically going to um, do exactly what we did before. Um, let me see if I can just modify finding the magnitude there, but instead of this, ah, never mind. Okay, uh, let's let's just do it by hand. Math nine for the integral. We're going to integral from zero to one point two of the square root of y one squared plus y two squared of the x component squared plus the y component squared. And I get 1.010 1 to three decimal points. 
Find the coordinates of the point which the particle is furthest to the left for t greater than or equal to zero. Explain why there's no point where the particle is furthest to the right for t greater than or equal to zero. So farthest to the left is um, this is the x coordinate. So I want to take the x coordinate, and furthest left means its velocity is at a minimum because it's gone as far left as possible, or its its velocity is zero. Its position is a minimum. So you want x of t to be a minimum. And so we want to calculate dx dt and set it um, equal to zero. I want to know when the velocity is zero. So this is the same as saying when the velocity of the x component is zero. So we want to look at, so this is the velocity in the x component. And um, yeah, and then, and then no point where it's farthest to the right. So we want to set this derivative equal to zero. So what we could do is we, we have this graph, we're going to window, I'm going to say from zero, well, let me see if I, I could compute the derivative. I guess this one is you could compute the derivative and set it equal to zero. So, or no, we already have it. So it's t minus one e to the t squared is equal to zero. Okay. So that's the velocity vx of t. When is that? Exponentials can never be zero. So this only occurs at t equals one. And is this a minimum or maximum? Well, if you consider t and if you consider vx of t, we do a sign test uh, at t equals one. We know the velocity is zero. But how about when it's greater than one? It's greater than one. This is positive. Exponential is always positive. So this is positive. And for t less than one, but greater than zero, this is negative and this exponential negative. So this is a relative, this is a relative minimum. And um, you could say, I don't know if you want, if they need you to spell it out by, but, but this is a, this is because it's increasing always to the right. This is the only, this is the very minimum point. It's decreasing, hits zero and then increasing. So at this point is the minimum. So the coordinates of the point is at t equals one. That's where the, that's where the minimum occurs. So the minimum occurs at that point. So now we have to figure out what x, what the coordinate of, what the position is. And in in vectors, um, we would have to basically say that, um, or the position at one, you could say, or minus the position at zero, at time zero is equal to the integral from zero to uh, one of the velocity vector, right? That's the integral zero to one of, of, of these two vectors, right? And then this x of zero, right, is the vector, is the initial position that's negative two comma five. So we wanna compute what this integral is by doing our calculation here. So, oh, did we do this already? Uh, no, we did only, nope, we only did that. So we have to do math uh, integral of zero to one uh, vers ugh, y1, this is the x component. And then so if you do x of one, basically you're gonna say, you're gonna do negative two five plus the integral from zero to one of v of t dt. And this is gonna give you the vector. So I got, this is the x component. I gotta, I gotta sub add negative two to it or subtract two. So I get negative 2.604. And then I have to do um, five plus the integral one for um, the y component. The y component I put in y2. This gives me 5.410. Okay, so that's the coordinates of the relative of the absolute minimum. And it's there's no for the for the for the most left point. This is the furthest left point. Now the furthest right is because the velocity is always greater than zero, there is no furthest right point. Because v of t is greater than zero for t greater than one. Um, the particle is always moving 
moving right as t goes to infinity. Okay, so that's why there's no furthest right point is because it always has something going to the right. And that's it.